Let's go to another case study where we will be playing with the first full-scale installation in Sweden. So this is a plan for micropollutant removal. We are looking here at the Linköping digital twin uh, at the right, and the real plant is at the left. So uh, this is a plant that has recently been built in the framework also of the CW Pharma project. Uh, it's a plant of Techniska Werken, and some of the people are also attending this webinar. And you can see that there is a side stream split and then it is further dissolved in this first compartment. You can see exactly the same happening in the tree. Just like with a real process, a digital twin has water flows coming in, these blue arrows. It also has reactions taking place described by a lot of chemical formula, which we have not uh, really shown in this webinar. And you can also play with the plant controls. So that's also quite important and interesting. So let's go back to Giacomo's screen and he will be outlining uh, the Swedish plant. Yes. Um, Wim, uh, maybe I'll jump in again just before Giacomo starts. There's a question more on the process side um, of ozonation. What if our model uh, predicts excessive bromate formation uh, for the required uh, API reduction? Do we ever discourage the use of oxidation uh, based on this model, for example, for coastal use or anything? Yeah, a very interesting question. Uh, well, then we have to probably look at mitigation strategies. If bromide levels are really high or they spike from time to time, for example, uh, they can be very well correlated with conductivity. This is what we have seen at a couple of plants. Um, there are mitigation measures that you might be able to test. For example, the addition of hydrogen peroxide uh, to suppress the bromate formation, which we have seen that works quite well uh, when bromide is high. Again, it depends on the matrix, but it works quite well so far, uh, we have seen. Or uh, some other strategies, like the dosing of uh, chemicals, other ones. But there are definitely things uh, you could be looking at. Yeah. So mitigation strategies and the testing with the model uh, is not something we will be covering now. We have done this in the last webinar where uh, the recording is available. And this was in the framework of the HRSD project in Virginia, the big water reuse project, SWIFT. So there they have bromide levels that are quite high and uh, still it's quite well working. All right, let's go to the virtual representation of the full scale plant of uh, Linkoping in, in Sweden. Uh, here, as has been uh, explained, comes the, the effluent of the upstream treatment plant. Uh, you have the, the split to the side stream injection where 10% of the incoming flow is directed. You inject the ozone, you join the mainstream again, and you let the reaction happen in the rest of the, of the installation. As, as a, similarly to, to the previous demo, uh, you can apply different control strategies. You can pick the and try different uh, controls without affecting the real plant. Uh, that's one of the main advantages of, of using uh, this, uh, uh, this virtual tool. So in this case, we had <clears throat> a little less frequent uh, measurements of, uh, of the influent characteristics. That's why you, will, you won't see the very high dynamics and high frequency dynamics that you've seen before, but we can perfectly live with that. Uh, we have flow, we have uh, total UVA, and dissolved organics as well, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. And here, what you see is the influent in black and effluent UVA concentrations and some measurements along. Actually, this is a, a, a year long. It's uh, like a, some the, summarized in uh, about 30 samples here, but it's a year long sampling campaign. And uh, here is how the, the, the model goes through the data. Uh, we don't have to, to put much of uh, hands in to do the calibration. Um, uh, we lived with, uh, with an already calibrated, previously calibrated model actually. And here you can see how the gabapentin, one of the micropollutants of interest for, uh, for this plant, <clears throat> for this territory, uh, in the inlet and in the out outlet, and the one in the outlet 
going through uh, the, uh, the measured data points. You can still, as it, I was saying before, you can still look at the conversion of the micropollutants that were uh, here to see the list of interest for, uh, for uh, this, this plant. But you can also look at a much larger list uh, that we have implemented there. So you can really have a large variety of, of micropollutants and all sorts of compound and intermediates uh, that you can think of. Um, uh, the conversion, so both concentration and in conversion terms, and still the plant-wide variables. So plant-wide, what is happening to, uh, what is the, the, the delta UVA you are uh, having along, along the year, uh, rather than the overall ozone dose, uh, uh, and so on. Um, all right, here's some gas flow, that's some process parameters. What, what is interesting to look at is a picture <clears throat> in an instant and in a single moment of the concentrations along the, uh, along the, the, the installation. So what are the concentrations here and there about like ozone in the side stream where you have high pressure and high speed injection of your ozone? Uh, what is the concentration of UVA along the train uh, in the side stream and where you join again the mainstream. So you have an increase again of the concentration, but not only and also about pH and micropollutants and, and uh, non, nonetheless, also hydroxyl radicals. What is the local concentration of radicals? Where is that my radicals are uh, produced the most and where is that uh, each micropollutant is, is uh, depleted uh, and to which extent. Um, speaking of, of production, since we have many different uh, pathways of producing uh, rad hydroxyl radicals, you can monitor which one is the, is the uh, most productive way of, uh, uh, for your installation and in combination with your water metrics, that's very important. And what is the scavenging locally and where it, it's happening mostly? These are all information that will lead to uh, an optimal uh, uh, and can give all sorts of background info to optimize your, uh, your installation or your, your design or uh, and, uh, operation of, of your treatment plan. So this is uh, all for, for this demo. I give the word back to, to Vim. So what we have done here is also some validation, additional validation. We have uh, looked at what pilot and full-scale studies uh, set in reality compared to what our model set in reality. So this is the reduction of pharmaceuticals as function of the ozone dose. Uh, DOC based. You can see that our model is uh, yeah, nicely capturing the trend, which are the dark blue dots here. Uh, you can see that the same pattern is more or less happening. This is the average removal of eight uh, pharmaceuticals. Okay, So average. On average, for example, with a 0 0.55 dose, you have around 80% average removal. Uh, you can also do the same with re reduction of UVA, where we controlled the plant in our model at 30%. And we, uh, we observed more or less 70% average reduction, which was very much in line also with the, both the full scale and pilot runs. So this is what Giacomo has been showing. Uh, uh, I mean, you can look at ozone levels throughout the train and you can see that the, specifically the hydroxyl radicals in a side stream, for example, but also off, right after injection can be rather high. In this specific plant, the residual ozone was only very low, 0.2. And then you can see it, it disappears very rapidly if you go a bit further in the reactor. Giacomo has illustrated this. So these are 40 APIs. Uh, but yeah, of course, we can, uh, you can keep extending uh, just, to, just to show that all of them are both, as, uh, again, function of ozone and radicals. So um, these are the, this is the time, the one-year simulation we had, and the required ozone as function of time 
and also as function of control strategy. For example, the solid curve here is the DOC proportional, while the dotted line represents the UV, the delta UV control. Let's control at the 30% removal of UV before and after with two sensors or one sensor. And then you can see the, res the corresponding API removal, the green line, and the corresponding UV uh, removal. And in the controlled scenario, of course, you are just very stable at 30% because you are controlling your plants at this. And just hypothetically, what would happen in this plant if there were no nitrites? Well, you can see the same curves, these brown ones, dropping quite significantly. And these are, the uh, let's say, the Bordeaux curves here which are of significant lower ozone dose. So with, with a very low ozone dose, actually, you get the same API or pharmaceutical removal. Uh, in this specific plant, nitrites had quite an impact because the levels were, were quite significant. So this is really, really important. And if you look at affluent treatment, again, you can do a very easy comparative analysis uh, in terms of ozone dose needed average and also the cost per hour the cost per hour in this plant. But of course, very much of this work and a very nice study has been done by uh, the CW Pharma people. It has all been published and this is available. So we didn't, uh, in this case, we didn't come up with the equations to, uh, to measure the cost. We started from their equations. But you can see the impact on nitrites. It's uh, easily five euros an hour less. Imagine you wouldn't have no nitrites.